on the 13th of April 2022, the Ukrainian government reported that their armed forces hit the Moskva cruiser, the flagship of the Russian Black Sea Fleet. Later, Russia refuted that Moskva was hit, but acknowledged that it was damaged due to an explosion of ammunition caused by a fire on the warship. It sank on April 14th. In this video, we're going to talk about the history of the Moskva cruiser, its role in Russian military operations in the 21st century, including the invasion of Ukraine, and the impact its sinking is going to have on the war. If you're into modern naval warfare, then we've got a useful offer for you from our sponsor, World of Warships. It's a PvP game of ship-to-ship -ship battles available for free on PC, featuring over 400 different vessels and more than 40 maps in realistic detail. Employ the various weapons of battleships, destroyers, aircraft carriers and cruisers for devastating and beautiful surface combat, or sneak below the waves and use submarines, all either playing solo or as a team with your friends. The massive 12 vs 12 engagements present endless tactical choices, from ship loadouts to dealing with dynamic weather events. They add new content every month, and by this point, World of Warships isn't just a game, it's a digital museum of hundreds of accurately modelled historic ships, showcasing not only iconic World War designs, but designs that weren't actually manufactured, brought to life at last. All this, by the way, is also available on consoles. Now for the offer. Get World of Warships via our link in the description, and you'll also get a huge starter pack. Enter the code FIRE while registering to receive 200 doubloons, the premium battleship USS Texas, 20 Restless Fire Camouflage, 1 million credits, and 7 days of premium account, all for free. The Moskva cruiser was built in the 1970s in the Mykolaiv shipyard in the Ukrainian SSR, and was commissioned in 1983 under the name Slava, Glory in Russian. The Slava was a 186 meter long, 12,490 ton cruiser, which had a capacity to accommodate more than 500 crew members. It carried surface to surface and surface to air missiles, deck guns, torpedoes, mortars, and possessed a helicopter deck. In the Cold War period, the Slava cruiser also carried nuclear weapons. The most notable appearance of the Slava in the Cold War era news is related to the use of the cruiser in the Malta meeting between Gorbachev and George H. W. Bush in Malta in 1989, which housed the Soviet delegation and was supposed to host the meeting between the leaders, but a gale forced the sides to meet on board of the Maxim Gorky cruiser instead. In the same year, American and Soviet scientists conducted joint tests aboard the Slava cruiser to measure the emissions of neutrons and gamma rays from a nuclear warhead on this warship. In 1990, the Slava was placed in the Mykolaiv shipyard for repairs, and was kept there until 1999. While being repaired, it was renamed the Moskva. After being recommissioned, it became the flagship of the Russian Black Sea Fleet in 2000. Russian President Vladimir Putin has used the Moskva cruiser on several occasions to host talks with other world leaders. In 2003, Putin and the then-Italian Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi travelled together aboard the Moskva cruiser to Sardinia, where Putin reportedly said, Thank God our cruisers can still go on their own, our planes and missiles can fly. During this trip, Putin also visited the La Maddalena naval base, operated by the United States. He interpreted his visit to this place and the presence of the Moskva cruiser as an indicator that the level of trust between Russia and the NATO countries is rising. But with the worsening relations between Russia and NATO, the role of the Moskva cruiser changed too. In 2008, Russia invaded Georgia, and the Moskva fought the Georgian navy. After Russia recognized the independence of the separatist Republic of Abkhazia, the warship was stationed in its capital, Sukhumi. It took part in the Russian annexation of Crimea in 2014 as it blocked the Ukrainian warships from leaving Lake Donislav. During the war in Syria, the Moskva cruiser was stationed in the eastern Mediterranean, near the Syrian-Turkish border, to provide air defense for the Russian aircraft carrying out missions in Syria. In 2018, it was once again sent for repairs, which were completed in 2020. As the flagship of the Russian Black Sea Fleet, the Moskva cruiser was involved in the Russian invasion of Ukraine in 2022 as well. 
according to various reports. At this time, the Moskva was armed with 16 P-1000 Vulcan anti-ship cruise missiles, with a range capability of at least 700 kilometers, and S-300 anti-air missiles. Along with that, it was equipped with six close-in weapon systems to protect the warship. It had a capability of 360-degree anti-air defense. The former chief of the Russian Navy's general staff, Viktor Kravchenko, called the Moskva cruiser the most serious ship in the Black Sea. It is confirmed that it was the Moskva which was tasked with ensuring the capture of Zminye Island in the early days of the Russian invasion. And yes, it was the Moskva which demanded the surrender of the small contingent of Ukrainian troops stationed in Zminye and received an iconic response of off Russian military ship, becoming the first major symbol of Ukrainian defiance in this war. It is the only confirmed participation of the Moskva cruiser in this war apart from its sinking. But some military experts have talked about the presumed missions of this warship. One of the reports claims that the Moskva played an important role in ensuring the Russian air advantage over Crimea and the Kherson Oblast, which had been occupied in the early days of the invasion. But since Russia already possesses powerful air defense systems in Crimea, the above claim about the role of the Moskva cruiser in the air defense of Crimea and Kherson is possible to dispute. There have also been claims about the role the Moskva cruiser played in the siege of Mariupol, which is disputed by the Institute for the Study of War, which stated that this warship was unlikely to have supported Russian strikes on Ukrainian land targets and primarily provided air defense coverage to Russia's Black Sea Fleet. Some military analysts have also argued that the Moskva cruiser was going to have a role in the amphibious landing of Russian troops to the strategically important Black Sea port of Odessa. The reports of the Ukrainian and Russian militaries regarding the sinking of the Moskva cruiser conflict too. Ukraine claimed that the warship was hit by two Neptune anti-ship cruise missiles of Ukrainian production on the 13th of April, around 100 kilometers off the coast of Odessa. The Ukrainian command reported the capsizing and later sinking of the ship on the following day. The Russian command acknowledged the damage to the Moskva cruiser, but did not mention the Ukrainian missile strikes. It claimed that the warship was on fire due to an explosion of ammunition on it. They put out the fire, which damaged the ship, but did not sink it. But in the evening of the 14th of April, Russia finally acknowledged the sinking of the Moskva cruiser which was allegedly caused due to the loss of its stability when it was towed to the port because of the damage to the ship's hull that it received during the fire from the detonation of ammunition. In stormy sea conditions, the ship sank. The fate of the crew is unknown, but a large number of casualties is highly likely. The photos released anonymously on the 17th of April show extensive damage and fires on the ship. Some naval analysts claim that the two impact craters from the Neptune missiles are clearly visible in the photos. We can also see the discoloration around the portholes of the vessel, which might imply that the damage done by the missile explosion caused fires both on the deck and below it. The fact that the rescue rafts that were seen in photos of the Moskva published on the 10th of April in the vicinity of Sevastopol are missing in the April 17th photos might mean that a considerable number of crew members might have escaped. On the 16th, the Russian Ministry of Defense published a video that allegedly shows the crew of the Moskva meeting the commander of the Russian fleet in Sevastopol. Experts claim that only around 200 sailors participated in this event. Now, what is the impact of the sinking of the Moskva cruiser on the Russian offensive against Ukraine? In a military sense, not much. According to a US official, Russia had employed warships in the war against Ukraine in a limited manner to carry out occasional strikes and resupply troops in the south. While Russia has two other missile cruisers of the same class, Marshal Ustinov and the Vayag, they are deployed in the eastern Mediterranean, and Turkey has closed the straits in accordance with the 1936 Montreux Convention, which would prevent Russia from bringing exact substitution for their loss. The biggest operational difference caused by the sinking of the Moskva is the Russian Black Sea Fleet moving further offshore to a distance of about 80 nautical miles. This would put these ships out of the reach of Ukrainian land missiles. Moskva was crucial for the amphibious assault operations, 
as it was supposed to cover the smaller, more vulnerable landing ships, so this loss might make the possibly planned amphibious landings unlikely. There is an ongoing discussion on the number of Neptune missiles that Ukraine was able to produce before the invasion started, but the possibility that there are more of them might mean that the Russians won't approach the coastal areas under Ukrainian control. The biggest damage inflicted on Russia by the sinking of the Moskva cruiser is more reputational. Even though the incident is not going to alter the course of the war in Ukraine, it is a huge propaganda win for Ukraine. They were able to sink the flagship of the Russian Black Sea Fleet with a Ukrainian missile. This ship had an apparent symbolic meaning for Putin, as he had used it on several occasions as the venue of meetings with foreign leaders. It also demonstrates that while on paper the Russian military is mighty, in real life it makes head-scratching mistakes in terms of adhering to necessary protocols to ensure the protection of its military assets. After all, the Moskva had everything to withstand the missile attack on it, but failed to do so. We are going to talk more about the Russian invasion of Ukraine in the coming weeks, so make sure you are subscribed and have pressed the bell button to see it. Please consider liking, commenting and sharing, it helps immensely. Our videos would be impossible without our kind patrons and YouTube channel members, whose ranks you can join via the links in the description, to know our schedule, get early access to our videos, access our Discord, and much more. This is the Kings and Generals channel, and we will catch you on the next one.